Welcome, everybody. It is episode 175 of Two Chaps, Many Cultures. Here is where we bring it all together. Friday, of course, uh, in our general lives, we bring it all together on a Friday. I think we we pack up ourselves ready for the weekend. And in this case, we're doing very that. It's uh, very much that. We've gone through this week four different uh, overarching dimensions of how people show up in the world. Today, we're going to give you some really tangible and complementary tools to use to go forward in which uh, you can uh, utilize these tools yourself. So stick around, it's gonna be fun. Yes, welcome back. The happy world's Friday. Number, the, happy Friday. The world's number one show on the business of culture and the culture of business, the daily number one show across the world. It get, we're, we're, the, 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 hype, the hyperbole is getting bigger, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> oh, what are what could be other superlatives we could use? The uh, super super bestest show is that the word? super bestest? That that would be nice. <laughs> the super califragilistic expialidocious program. Welcome everybody. Formi Happy formidable. Yeah? Formidable. Is, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, my best program. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I was going to ask what what I I would I was going to say. Probably even an ex and uh, a superlative in German would sound angry. I would say, wouldn't it? If you no, I, you I made it. I made it sound angry. But I think a superlative okay. in German, a, a real superlative, would be, "Hey, this is the einfach beste Show zu diesem Thema im ganzen Internet, und ihr seid da. Großartig." See, yeah. it wasn't all that harsh, right? You can, no. you can, you can sound German and still be nice. <laughs> Well, and I know that. Well, welcome, everybody. Here we are bringing it together on a Friday. Just en encap encapsulating what we have covered in the four days leading up to this. We've covered this a whole week. Probably our first really fully themed week that we've managed to pull off in any way, shape, oh, or no, form. Oh, no, we had one earlier. We remember, we had arts we? and culture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we did themed yeah. weeks before. It just kind of never... The topics never lended themselves to another themed week until now. So, right, yeah. But there's a overarching theme through all of our shows, all of our episodes, is that we would like to engage with you. So, yeah, we are hyperbolous and we will um, fan each other's egos to no end. We can do that. We're middle-aged white men, and we learned all our lives to. That, that that's a behavior that has been rewarded. Um, I'm not saying that is good, but that's what we're really good at. Um, but a common <laughs> thread is we want to know who you are. We want to know where in the world you're dialing in from, what you like about the program, what some ideas, suggestions, comments, thoughts are. We, we, we're not doing this to please ourselves or to sound super smart, which by the way, we're not anyway. Um, we're doing this for full engagement with our audience, with, with our tribe or our, our nation, so to say, our cultural nation across the world. And let us know whether you're watching this live or whether we're sending to you in a time zone that's not really conducive for live watching and you're you're one of those recording well, watches of the recordings either way we love you regardless and we want to know who you are and what's good about your life and how we might be able to help you make it even better so that's that's the hyperbolistic version of myself and there we go ingo Holland. Herzlichen guten Tag, schöner Freitag an den Ingo, um, a German in upstate New York. It doesn't get better than that. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Welcoming. And, and I, I would like to, I would like to tie, or we both would like to tie this up this week. We talked about personality archetypes. We talked about the um, bank personality profiling methodology, which comes in four primary colors as we shared with you throughout the week. I actually looked into my closet to see, do I have a shirt that would reflect those four colors? It's not the exact same colors, but here, 
There's some red, there's yellow, there's blue, and I have green too. So I found a shirt that kind of sort of reflects the colors of the bank methodology. And we talked on Monday about the blueprints who like to stay in the box. Go back if you watch, if you didn't see that episode, watch the recording on our YouTube channels, or you'll find it on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So the blueprints, they like stability, they like predictability, they like the box. We talked on Tuesday about the action types. They like flexibility, spontaneity, freedom. They can get out of the box fast enough. On Wednesday, we talked about the and the nurturing type, those who like to recycle and reuse the box, who value contribution, a bigger picture, a contribution to greater common good, nurturers. And yesterday, on Thursday, we talked about the knowledge types, those who claim for themselves that they invented, engineered, and designed the box. Uh, they like universal truth. They like research and development. They like self-mastery and just perpetual learning. So these are the four archetypes. and. As we told you throughout the week, none of us are simply one of them singularly. We're all a mixture of all four. So Brett yesterday said it's got to be the big reveal. I'm not sure how big it is. However, we're going to reveal our complete bank codes to you. And before I'm going to let Brett, oh, um, we have another another German reference here. Maybe not a German person, but somebody who lives in German <laughs> town, Tennessee. Samira, thanks for watching. I love it. Hi, oh, Samira. Yeah. Now this so, is this is right. I guess I guess today is about um, as we always do. We 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 don't like to keep stuff to ourselves. We 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 would be terrible keeping secrets. I think. Don't don't oh, ever tell us any of your deeper secrets because we're here to give away stuff. We're here to just. Give it all away. We're here to tell you exactly how to use this, how, mm -hmm. how to use it as a tool um, and, and a resource to be able to understand the people you interact with every day and perhaps actually give a little bit of insight into yourself, which is always important, right? Right. Well, like we said throughout the week, there are many personality assessments or personality profiling instruments or tools out there many of which have their validity in the market. They've been around for a long time and have proven their worth, and we're not making them wrong. We simply add another facet to how you can use personality profiling. So we're not, we're not discontinuing anything that's been around. However, you may have noticed that many of these personality profiles work with a baseline of four different archetypes, which basically goes back to the ancient Greeks and their four temperaments. And everything since Aristotle and Socrates and Plato has been copyright infringement anyway in, to a certain extent. So we're, we're not claiming that we're reinventing um, human knowledge. However, we bring to you a modernized, very immediately applicable version, right? And the immediacy that we shared with you throughout the week via this link, um, some of you already checked it out, but we thought it might be a good idea to show you um, how this actually works, well, in real time. So let me bring down this link and let me share with you the actual website so you see how this can work for you. So if you go to the link that, what, what, what does Ingo say? Uh, um, a bit like your shirt. Some people uh, feel like they're a bit like your shirt, a bit of all colors. Yeah. Um, but the background is constantly changing. That's, that's, like that. that's a, that's like a good that. perspective. I love metaphorical references. Um, and, and, of course, Samira says, how about when managers use it for personality assessment? And this is good. That as is Christian... exactly, that is yeah. exactly what we're gearing up to, to show you. So thank you for asking, Samir. So I want to address Ingo's comment because he is spot on. None of us are just one personality type. We are all a mixture of the four. So when I said we're going to reveal the complete code, it's almost like imagine your debit card or your your bank account or your any type of password protected 
um, protection system lock is comes with a pin, right? It comes with a um, with a code, and just with a bank code. It's about the sequence. It's not just that you have the individual numbers right. You want to have them in the right sequence, and you want to have all of them. So if you go to this link here, this one, crackmycode.com forward slash Hoevere, it will take you to the website that we're, we're showing you here, and it will ask you to do this. It will First, it will explain how it works, just like we did all week. So you will read the cards. That's number one. So you get... The four cards that we're holding up here, you get them online. And then number two, you select the cards from most important to least important. And number three, you submit the cards. You give us your email. And in return, we will send you a report. Actually, retail value of everything we're going to give you today, there's going to be a worksheet for you to download um, at the end of the episode. So I want you to stay tuned for that because we give you even more than what's available online on this website. And that's the retail value of $99. So if the client comes to me and says, hey, I want to do this with my team, that's $99 per person. So you get this as our Friday gift to you. So we can't keep secret and we can't keep good stuff to ourselves. So here are the four cards in a digital form. And it will even it gives you even an option in which language you want to look at these cards. So there is lots of um, translations. Some of them are great. Some of them probably are still a little bit, nah, maybe they're working on it. Uh, the one that I would like to uh, make you aware of are the icons. So there are even cards for those who don't read yet. So you can use this with kids or with people whose language you don't have available right now or somebody who maybe um, has a, a reading um, disability or, or flexibility. Maybe, maybe they just don't read as well. So you can use the value cards even with these icons. So there's multiple versions for you to use this. And then um, the website will recalibrate <laughs> to, to get it back to English. And then you'll be able to sort the cards. So I'm going to reveal my full bank code to you. So my dominant code is knowledge. My second code is action. My third is nurturing. And my fourth is blueprint. So this is my full bank code. Now, there is more nuance to that, especially when it comes to the second and third position. And I will go into this later. But this is basically my pin. This is the green, the values of the knowledge are the ones you want to speak to me if you want to enroll me, if you want to convince me, if you want to get my buy-in or approval, or if you want to build rapport. Also, you want to pay attention to how much you speak to my action values, how much you speak to my desire for freedom and flexibility and excitement. What you don't want to do is you don't want to bore me with your systems with your predictability with how much you are budget conscious and how much um how, how many degrees you have and uh, how this is a, a traditional product or service that to me does not matter as much to me it matters can you prove to me how it works how you have proven in the market that it's the latest cutting edge development, that it is well-researched and developed, that I can easily understand it and master it myself. This is what's important to me. So that's my bank code. Now let's look at Brett. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this. And let's ask, oh, well, let's go back and redo this because every one of us has their unique bank. So then you can imagine. So if you have four options, how many different bank codes are there? Do the math. Brett told me to never do math live on television or on the internet. But if I'm not mistaken, there are 48 different combinations possible. So Brett, I think I know your first one is nurturing. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Now, what's your second? Knowledge. Ah, OK. And what's uh, next? Action and Blueprint. So here we go. This is Brett's. So this means 
similarly to myself, you don't want to start the conversation with Brett about how how you have all the credentials to do the work and how uh, how you are a rule enforcer and how much you value structure and predictability in the system. To Brett, what's important? Well, Brett, what's important to you? I don't want to tell people who you are. You you tell them who you are. <laughs> Well, it is, um, you know, I, I identify with the words that are on this card and that's how I, I've identified. That's my, um, uh, my dominant set. So it is relationships, community, ethics, harmony, um, things that, that kind of speak to a, a community approach to a task or a, or, a, or a group action. So mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what leads me. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. And also it's important that similar to what triggers me or what, what, what will help you convince me is if there is sound proof to what you say for Brett, right? But again, the blueprint, not so much his cup of tea. Um, and Karen, I'm suspecting you are sharing your code with us. Yep. Or perhaps it was your guess of Brett's code. Who knows? But now we know <laughs> Karen is knowledge first. I would suspect that that's that's what he's trying to tell her. So that's another combination, right? Um, I've met people who are very strong in blueprint, and here, here's how this matters. Um, what turns a blueprint on, what is important to a blueprint, an action type will often not find very appealing, right? When a nurturer starts about all their... Uh, valuable contributions and how it's all ethical and um, how it's uh, serving humanity. The knowledge person will say, yeah, sure, maybe that's important. But for me, that's not the dominant reason for me to make a decision. So the right combination is what matters. Now, I will, and I'm, I'm going to remove this for now. So you see the website, how it works. So here again is the link. Make sure you use it. It's free for you to use. Play around with it. And as you submit your results, you will trigger the cascade. You will automatically get your, your complimentary report on what that means for your dominant code. Now, there's something I think you should know that um, this is the quick and not the quick and dirty, the quick and easy version to find out about the code. So the, the card sorting game is something you can easily do. So either you do it online, you can have your own website to do this. So it could say crackmycode.com forward slash Ingo or Karen or Samira or whatever you want to have there or a manager using it from my company. Um, it's up to you. So you can have a website like this for yourself. You can use these cards. We, we can ship them to you. If that is something you would like to have. Um, However, you want to get certified on how to debrief it with a client first, obviously. And how you do all this, we put together in a worksheet for you. So I'm going to pull this up real quick while Brett keeps the line busy. <laughs> I keep the line busy? I'm, I'm a good filler in that in that sense, yeah. No, I just want to reiterate that the way I've used this is to, um, uh, I mean, there is an AI component to this. So there is a, a, a way that you can interpret somebody's... Uh, dominant style through emails they write through uh how they reflect or present themselves on a on a public forum like linkedin or so on and so forth so um this is not particularly you know you don't even have to have the person in front of you you can get an idea i think it to me it's always been more valid when i've had people in front of me and i can give give them the opportunity to kind of ask questions about uh the different perspectives of the values. Uh, I think that's another thing that's probably for another top, another day. But um, right. looking at the definitions of the values that appear on these cards can sometimes be culturally different, and and that's yes, a, that's another right. aspect of it um, that we've seen. So uh, you know, this is a show about culture, even though this is a, a more of a personality. But 
there are some aspects of culture that can play into this and you need and you can be aware of those so that's just one observation i've made in in using this. yes very very true and thank you for bringing this up because it's easy to misconstrue these values to personality phenomena that you experience in one culture versus the other what constitutes an action type uh, a freedom flexibility uh, excitement seeker in the us will be different to that same action type in let's say germany or japan right so these tools we advise you to use them in combination that these tools in and by themselves are one instrument to do something your toolbox consists of more than a a, a, a screwdriver right you you have pliers you have bolt cutters you have i don't know maybe i don't know how what else is in your in your toolbox our power tools include bank we also have other power tools now here here's what's in your worksheet so we will give you the download link in a little bit but what you'll see here is basically an explanation a summary of what we shared with you throughout the week and how you can use it and to ask uh, to answer samir's question where we're getting closer to this we actually give you the full um, in-depth assessment and questionnaire. So you, you're seeing the online, or you saw the online version a, a few seconds ago. Here in this worksheet, you'll get the full bank code assessment. It consists of a questionnaire with 20 questions. It's got fifth grader levels instructions. So anyone can, can do this on their own. So you answer these questions and in the end, you can, evaluate it and you will get on this screen here you'll get a a chart that will give you numeric values for each of the four archetypes so you'll have a number of blueprint you'll have a number of acting you'll have a number of nurturing and a number of knowledge and it may change after the questionnaire it may change the sequence that you put for yourself when you were sorting the cards it happened to a few people that I've, I've done this with that they think they sort themselves correctly and then after answering all the questions it became apparent that maybe a few of these positions changed so we invite you and this is this is not available for free on the internet usually so we give this to you this is our um episode 175 our weekend gift to you do the assessment go through those 20 questions get the numbers and get your really detailed bank code now that's all fine and dandy you need to know how to use it right you need to know how to debrief it in in, in most people we we talked about throughout the week most people typically speak from or act and behave from their dominant code and thereby missing 75 percent of humanity who prefer a different communication style. Knowing your bank code is great. That's the first step. Knowing how to use it and how to adjust your communication is the next step. So what we're offering, and this is basically a once in a lifetime thing because usually that's not something we do publicly. So what you do, well, there's more information on how to use it, but what, what you get as a next step is you get a personal call with me or maybe with Brett, or maybe with somebody else on our team, we'll, we'll figure it out depending on how many how many registrations we get for this. Um, there's a link in the work paper how you can get on our calendar and we will debrief your in-depth bank code that you got as a result from taking the in-depth assessment. We'll debrief that with you and that's our gift to you. So that is, something that usually doesn't happen but we thought hey easter is around the corner and so is ramadan and we thought may maybe we do something good for the world we we brought out our nurturer um or i dug up my nurture a little more so, um, <laughs> i just want to go back to that st statistics that that you know, yep. like the impact of how you are communicating and only reaching 25 percent of your potential audience in an effective way okay so we right. talk about you know, I often refer to Seth Godin's approach to this. It's, you know, there is a, people deserve to hear from you, right? And uh, and the reason we do this show is that we, we think we've got something to say. We think we've got something of value. We also think that we can learn a lot from our audience. Um, but we show up in a certain way. So um, 
being aware of how we show up and possibly how we might change it to serve a wider audience, the other 75%, um, as Seth Godin says, these people deserve to hear from you, right? You, they, These are people who deserve to hear your message and your, um, your insights. Um, and again, you deserve to hear from them. So the, this is this was profound to me when I first started using this. So I said, this is right. I, I may yeah. be missing 75% of the people I want to reach and serve simply yeah. because I'm not taking care of their needs in terms of the way that they'd like to learn and uh, absorb information. So um, this is how important it is. It's important for yeah. leaders. It's important for team members is that you, you are serving people in a very intentional way. Um, that and so that's what drives i guess that's what drives us in our work and it seems to in general drive the people that do our work um to be able to serve people but that it, just thinking that that profound insight that we're actually missing potentially 75 percent of the people we could probably yep. have some impact to i want to address samira's question here because there's a there, it's a loaded question samira and i i wish I, we had another hour to give you a, a deeper dive on that um here here's the the quick quick answer how we found it to be used in organizations here let me give you an example we did um, an excessive training with a fintech company um, here in atlanta georgia it's uh, we we work with their with their training department and with their customer service department so they have hundreds of customer service agents serving clients calling in typically on a customer service line People don't call in to say, hey, what a great sunny day today, and I just wanted to tell you how much I like you. No, they call in because it's up to here, right? They've had it. They're, they're unhappy for a reason. And their customer service agents, they usually follow a script, right? Whether that works or not is beyond me, but the lead trainer of that organization was in our training, and she said, oh, my God, I need to rewrite my scripts because we've been talking, all of our agents have been talking 25% instead of 100%. So what they did is they coded every single one of their clients in their phone system connected with, I believe, Salesforce. They had a plugin to let them know when somebody called one of their clients. They immediately knew, oh, this client is blueprint first, nurturing second, knowledge third, action third, uh, fourth. This is my client. Now I know which, how to adjust my language to that client. So this is probably the, the killer app application of, of this. How do you use it with as a manager with, with a team? You could use it in the hiring process, right? So you ask your applicants, you let them play the card game or you give them the full assessment. You figure out what is their personality type does that fit for the role you're hiring for? Does that fit with the team members that this new hire is supposed to collaborate with? Because obviously you did the assessment with your current staff before that, and you know what your staff's codes are and whether that new hire will be gelling well with the existing team. I've well, been another, been, sorry to interrupt. I, I'm thinking of another potential extending that to saying, do we actually want more of the same people in that team? Of course not. Do, do, do we have a team that is actually ostensibly, their gears are kind of a bit, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a bit slow in working because they're made up of a lot of people that, um, that are, you know, that are kind of restrained, I guess. It's not, you know, they, they've got their positive aspects, but they're restrained by constantly looking and testing data and things like that. Do we not want to hire somebody who perhaps is a little bit more action orientated and can lead right. that team and match quite well, melt quite well with them and match and actually take that forward? So that's just another aspect of the potential of this to bring bring exactly. diversity of thought and, and style. Yeah. Right. It's not about having the exact match. You don't. If your desire is to hire the same code combination throughout the team, that's your decision. But as Brett said, if you figure out, well, my team is predominantly this and I need a little bit more of that. So let me do the assessment with a potential new hire and let's see whether I can get the right spark into that team that I that, that could 
start that change process that I have in mind. Mm -hmm. And and Samir, I would really invite you to use the link. Um, um, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, that's how we use it. Thank you, Samir. Great, great, great. And Karen says, um, fantastic tool. Yeah, I agree, Karen. And it's a great opportunity. You're spot on. I would really, if you haven't done so yet, I would encourage you ch check out the link. Do, do the quick and fast, quick and easy version. And then finally, um, go to this page right here. Go to, and let me, let me put the the short link into our chat box, and I should have had this pulled up before, so but bear with me. Um, this, is live, have... this is live to, live to drive, as they say, on the Friday afternoon. We've got plenty of time. What else have we got yeah, to do? do. Leading into the weekend. Um, hope everybody's got a week, got a great weekend ahead. Um, so we put it in the comment box below, and we will populate all the other channels where this doesn't auto-populate. So you could also write this link down, bit.ly forward slash two chaps minus many cultures underscore how to, right? So you see it right here. That will take you to our page where you can download the worksheet. Um, that is this worksheet that we showed you earlier. So it's got all the um, relevant information on bank and how to use it for you. Um, it will answer a lot of the questions you had, Samira, and it will answer a lot of the questions that many others have um, here, right here, how you can use it in your organization. And it also gives you an overview of the next steps, how you dive deeper. So we have three levels of how you can dive deeper. We call it bank fundamentals, which will allow you to actually debrief the instrument properly. Um, we also have bank speed coding, how you can learn to quickly recognize um, somebody's bank code um, reliably without necessarily having the, the cards or the online tool available to you. And finally, bank power scripting, which is, in my opinion, and this is because I'm a dominant knowledge person, right? So this is what I value much is the bank uh, power scripting, where you will learn how to massage your messaging in a rainbow in all the four um, archetypal codes, right? You can um, write a better email campaign. You can write better website copy. You could write better job description or any type of written or spoken communication. How do you script it better? And this is something that we teach in an in-depth course in bank power scripting. So there's multiple layers you can go deep with us. Um, for now, use the, the, the starter the starter kit we give you here with this worksheet and with the online with the online instrument. And we, we sincerely hope you take advantage of it because we are convinced this is a great tool that will make you better at what you do. As good as you are, we can always be better. Or we can be better, of course. But I don't know, is it is it possible to be better than the world's number one <laughs> number one show on the business of culture and the culture of business? Is it possible to be any I better think than it, this? I think <laughs> it is, and I can't <laughs> wait for somebody to get better than we are. Absolutely. We encourage you to start your own show and challenge us. Do it, turn right. up every day. You too can be the world's number one show on the, business of culture, on the culture of business. Um, or come and, you know, in the meantime, come and join us as a guest. If you want to come on as a guest and tell us about the great work you do in the world of culture and business, we are here to learn. And so is our audience. And so we, we are always grateful for the people who watch, listen and, and respond to what we do for our little bit of, um, you know, a little contribution to the world or big contribution to the world. <laughs> I'm, I almost forgot my judge. <laughs> you be the judge, my friend. You be, you the, be judge. the judge. Yes, absolutely. So well, make sure you, you follow us. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channels. Uh, find us on the socials. I would suspect some of you have already found us on the socials. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this. Now, tell your friends about it because we want to stay the number one show, you know. So tell your friends about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about ratings, isn't it? <laughs> hey, how do you think we get those 
those top dollar commercial breaks on here, right? That's right. I mean, we couldn't have we couldn't have built the two chaps towers without it. I mean, it exactly. really is. It's a, it you know, it's a marvel of architectural engineering, and um, we and we encourage once the once the pandemic's done and people can travel, we we you know we're going to invite thousands of people to the grand opening and um, or to know, the to the live studio with before a live that, audience, right? That's the, right. The, yeah, yeah. The live studio audience, yeah. Kind of <laughs> kind of like a Saturday night live type of thing. I can see it going oh, downhill like very quickly. <laughs> that, that'll be amazing. So you'll <laughs> sing live, right? That that'll be it. Something like that, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we wish you a happy weekend and we we think we delivered crack value to you this week. I think this was I'm I'm happy about how this went this week. Yeah. Um we can't wait to hear your feedback and to to see you get on our calendars and we will crack this thing wide open with you. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next week with another week of fun, a fun frivolity with two chaps, many cultures. Um, have a wonderful weekend. Same to you. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.